Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to be discussing horizontal asymptotes. Here we have the definition of a horizontal asymptote. It says the line y equals l is a horizontal asymptote of the curve y equals f of x if either the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is equal to l or the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to l. So if either of these conditions are true, then the line y equals l is actually a horizontal asymptote. What we're going to do now is do several examples of finding limits, and we'll identify the horizontal asymptotes that come about from these examples. Okay, so in these first three examples, I'm going to show you a trick so you can actually come up with the answer without showing any work. And then I'll actually show you how to show the work. So first, let's look at part A. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 plus 4x over 3x plus 7. So the idea here is that you're asking the question, what is happening to this function here inside the limit as x gets really, really big, as x approaches infinity? Well, the reality is the only terms that matter are the terms of highest degree. So in this case, this is 4x to the first power in the numerator and 3x to the first power in the denominator. Because the degrees are both one, they're the same, the answer is the ratio of the coefficients. They're called leading coefficients, so 4 over 3. Boom, that's the answer. And in this case, because this satisfies the definition of horizontal asymptote, recall it's just basically saying whenever you take a limit and you get an answer, that, that answer is your HA. So in this case, our HA, or horizontal asymptote, I'll just write HA, is y equals 4 thirds. It's really important to put the y equals when you're indicating the horizontal asymptote. In part b we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared plus 3x plus 4 over 3x squared plus 7x plus 1. Same thing if you look here this is degree 2, this is degree 2. They match so the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the answer is 2 over 3. As before whenever you take a limit to infinity or negative infinity and you get an answer that's basically going to be your horizontal asymptote. So your HA is Y equals two thirds. Super important to put the Y because a horizontal asymptote is actually a line, it's a horizontal line. So in the first two examples, the degrees matched. So the general theme is whenever the degrees match, the answer is the ratio of the coefficients. Again, in part A, it was four over three, boom, we're done. Part B, it was two over three, boom, we're done. Part C, it's a different story. We have the limit as X approaches infinity, of 2x over x squared plus 1. In this case, in the numerator, the degree is 1. In the denominator, the degree is 2. So what's happening here is when x gets really, 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 really big, the denominator, x squared plus 1, is growing at a much faster rate than the numerator. This fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. This is approaching 0. And so the answer is 0. So whenever the degree is bigger on the bottom, the answer is always going to be 0. Whenever they're the same, it's going to be the ratio of leading coefficients. In all other cases, you have to think a little bit more. And in this case, the HA is going to be Y equals zero. Boom. Really nice technique and worth knowing how to do it in your head like this. Let's go ahead and do some more examples where we actually show the work. Part D, we have the limit as X approaches negative infinity of X cubed plus one over four X cubed plus X. In this case, just like before, because the degrees are the same, it's three in the numerator and three in the denominator, the answer is going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients. In this case, it'll be one over four, and that's the answer. And the horizontal asymptote, as before, is just y equal to whatever answer you get, or one over four. However, what if you had to show work for some reason? Let me show you how to actually show the work because it's worth seeing it at least once. We've got the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And I'm gonna go ahead and write down our limit again. So we have x cubed plus one over four x cubed plus x. And the idea here is that we want to divide everything by x cubed. And the reason you're allowed to do that is because basically what we're going to do is multiply by one over x cubed divided by one over x cubed. We're multiplying by one in a very, very clever way. So this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches negative infinity, 
And now we're basically going to take this one over x cubed and distribute it through to the numerator and denominator. So we'll have x cubed over x cubed plus one over x cubed. And this can actually be your first step. I just showed the previous step just to add more clarity to indicate why we can do it because we're basically multiplying by one. And we have four x cubed over x cubed. And then plus x over x cubed. This is equal to the limit. Notice I'm writing the limit sign every time. Really important to do that in problems like this until you actually take the limit. x cubed over x cubed is one. And we have plus one over x cubed all divided by, and then the x cubes cancel, so we have four plus one over x squared. Now it's a little bit more clear. We can drop the limit sign. As x approaches negative infinity, one over x cubed is gonna get really small. It's gonna approach zero. Same thing with one over x squared. So we're left with one plus zero over four plus zero, which is equal to one over four. That's how you would show the work in this example and in the previous three examples if you wanted to do it. Part E, find the limit as x approaches infinity of the arctangent of e to the x. So this example is really important because the arctangent comes up a lot in calculus. So in order to do this problem, you basically want to have the graph of arctangent memorized. Let me show you what it looks like. So here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. So we have x, and then here we have y. And the graph of arctangent is really interesting because it has two horizontal asymptotes. It has one up here, and this is pi over two. And then it has one down here, and this is negative pi over two. And the graph itself, I'll draw it in red, is gonna look something like this. So this is the graph in red of y equals the arctangent of x. Let's think about what's happening in our particular problem. As x is approaching infinity, e to the x is also getting really, 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 really big. So basically, we have the arctangent of something that's getting really, really, really big. So as x approaches infinity, our function is pretty much behaving just like the arctangent function. It's approaching pi over two. And so the answer is pi over two. In this case, the horizontal asymptote would be the equation y equals pi over two. And as you can see here, the actual arctangent function itself does have another horizontal asymptote. It's negative pi over two. All right, let's keep going. Let's now consider the case where we approach negative infinity. This one is not as simple as it appears. So we have to think about what's happening here. As x approaches negative infinity, what's happening to e to the x? So if we think about the graph of e to the x, it looks something like this. Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. And e to the x has a horizontal asymptote that lies on the x-axis. And I'll draw it here in red, it looks something like this. This is the graph of y equals e to the x. So you see as x approaches negative infinity, e to the x approaches zero. So this is going to approach the arctangent of zero, which is just zero. And that would be the answer in this case. And that means that the horizontal asymptote in this case would be y equals zero. Kind of interesting. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a better understanding of horizontal asymptotes and how to find them. If you want more examples, I do know that Chegg has videos on these, so make sure to check those out. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.